Hey guys, Shauna here. Welcome back to Suitcase Princess. If you are new, we are a homeschooling family of four who loves Disney and loves to get out and do things, especially with our children. We enjoy taking the kids and encouraging others to get out with their babies, to find more fun in what they're doing, to find more value in the dollars that they're spending, and to do all of it with a little bit less stress. Today, I want to share with you our family experience experience with Genie Plus. Before we go any further, guys, please scroll down, hit that big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. If you are here for family-oriented Disney content, the how-tos, the whys, the things that are gonna make your Disney trip a little bit easier, you're definitely gonna wanna subscribe because we just returned ourselves and I am ready to share all the things that worked, all the things that didn't work, the things that have stayed the same from all of our Disney knowledge pre this kind of world, and to give you some new tips, tricks, helpful hints that will ensure that you and your family have great success on your Disney travels, on all your travels. We also have a ton of holiday content coming up because, well, it's the holidays and it's a great time to do that. So we may even be posting multiple times a week here. So be sure to hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications and give us some love. Now let's jump right into this. Okay, so we are very experienced Disney travelers. However, as you know, the entire world, especially the travel industry, has been turned upside down over the last couple of years. So I didn't necessarily feel as confident sharing things that may have been changed, things that may be outdated, things that just may not still apply as far as the massive amount of Disney knowledge that I do have. Let's talk about Genie Plus. I've seen a lot of reviews on it, not a ton where it is coming from a family, a family standpoint. And let's not kid, that adds up, okay? So number one, RIP FastPass. I loved FastPass. Figured out how to work it, figured out how it worked for us, and I can understand now having used Genie, Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, I can understand why Disney completely rebranded it because FastPass is not the same. FastPass and Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes, they are not the same. I think if you're gonna take a service that was free and now charge for it, and just the logistics of how different booking Lightning Lanes is compared to FastPass, I think, especially now having seen it, that the rebranding was crucial. It was absolutely crucial because Again, so many changes have been made. And I do think it is one small step where Disney went out of their way to decrease confusion um, was in going ahead and totally rebranding it, giving it a new name, a new everything. I think that actually did help a lot, okay? Now, let's talk about what things are. Okay, so I'm gonna be screen recording through some of this so that I can insert it so that it's kind of like a, a, real, a real world account here. So apologize. I apologize, I'm looking down a lot. I've got the phone, I've got the notes. I'm, I'm ready to give you as much information as I possibly can. So let me open up the app. I'm gonna show you um, what the differences are in Genie. Genie Plus, and then the individual lightning lanes. Okay, so you can click right on your My Disney Experience app, open it up, you can go to View My Day. So on My Day, I can change the date um, at the top and I can tell it what park I'm going to, and I can go in and I can actually plug in anything that I'm interested in doing. It will ask you questions to help you narrow down what it feels it should recommend for you. Now. It is glitchy, it is not accurate, and it really does try to like push you to things that you wouldn't necessarily wanna do, and it really does encourage you to buy the, the individual lightning lanes. Like, it's like, oh, you wanna do this? Sure, here's too many. Like, it, as if that's the only way, and it's not the only way. Okay, so then, one of the biggest things that I found in the Genie, just the simple Genie app in my Disney experience. One of the things that I found to be the absolute most useful as far as planning my day was the tip board. Now the tip board, you can go in, you can view the wait times, and you can also see what time the next lightning lane is available for those rides. And this is actually key because it tells you, if you know, if you see 
that the wait time is 30 minutes and there's a ton of lightning lanes available for right now or within the next hour, it's almost certainly not really a 30 minute wait. And so you can um, plan and strategize that way based on the information that Disney is giving you. Now let's talk about Genie Plus. So we did purchase Genie Plus for one day and we knew that it would be the busiest day of our entire trip. We went to Magic Kingdom on Halloween and I scheduled our reservations for that back in February and it sold out in like March or April. So every time that Disney increased capacity, it would then sell out again. So I know based on experience, any holiday in the parks is going to be at capacity basically for Magic Kingdom. So we knew that this would be our busiest day. Because of that, we knew that it would be the best use of our money to go ahead and try out the Genie Plus which is, it's the AI, but then it also gives you the lightning lanes to over 40 attractions throughout Disney World property and like some AR lenses or yeah, augmented reality lenses and then like some audio stuff, like, okay. So it's basically um, paid fast pass, like basically, very basic, basically paid fast pass. And it is $15 per person per day. So before we left for our vacation, we had the option to add Genie Plus to every day. And I think there are a lot of people thinking that this is a great idea. For my family of four, for our 10 day vacation, I would have spent an additional $639 on my vacation, which just to break this down for you, because I love to look at everything in vacation value, what could I get for that money? For $639, I could, I don't know, pay for all of the sit down meals that we actually took part in on our vacation. I could cover all three of our character dining that I took part in on our vacation, or I don't know, cover the rest of our entire food budget. This is why I knew, and because again, I've got experience, so I know, some of the workings of Disney. I knew that this was not going to be something that I was going to just immediately cut a check to Disney for because again, didn't think it was gonna be worth the money. Pause, pause on that, we'll be back to that. So that is Genie Plus. Now there's Genie, which basically just tells you what you should do and when you should do it. There's Genie Plus, which includes those 40 lightning lanes and like some picture things and audio stuff. And then there are the individual lightning lanes. They took what they deemed to be the two most valuable rides in every park and they made them a lightning. You can still do all the other ways to get into them, but they made them, if you wanna go through those lightning lanes, you're gonna pay per ride. Did we do one of these? We did one. Which one was it? Rise of the Resistance. Why? Because I wanted to be certain we rode the ride. And so because of that, you can also on the individual lightning lanes, you can pick your times. Genie Plus, you cannot. Genie Plus, you cannot pick your times. You are just left at the mercy of whatever is happening. So the individual lightning lanes uh, was pretty good. Would I do it again? Now that we've ridden Rise of the Resistance three times, probably not. Um, of those times, I paid for one. So do you need to do it? No, you don't. Uh, but... I, you know, if you're gonna be there one time and you definitely wanna insure those rides and you're not willing to rope drop, but just get there at the absolute earliest possible time you can get there to walk to the ride and then just wait it out when it's the lowest time or stay till park closing when it's again, just the lowest wait time, then yeah, you should do it. You should totally do it. Okay, so our plan was to use Genie Plus on our Magic Kingdom day, the busiest day. We knew it would be the busiest day in the parks for us. And so we said, you know what, that's a great time to do it because we'll be able to see the value. Like we've done fast passes in the past and been able to use, you know, 20 fast passes in a day. So we have some sort of witness to compare this to. Well, it's a good plan, um, but I have some serious complaints with Genie Plus. Now, most of the AR lenses, you can actually still access not when you've paid for Genie Plus, so it's important to know that they're in just the Genie app. So a lot of that is not even necessarily a perk for that. Um, I know that staying on property, I could pay for my Genie Plus ahead of time for the day, like as early as midnight, I think, and then I can book right at 7 a.m. People who are not staying on property cannot book until the park opens. If you're not staying on property, it's gonna be a lot harder to get some of those rides. Slinky Plus, 
or Slinky Dog Dash is booking up well into the day. We were at Magic Kingdom on Halloween, and so ha Haunted Mansion, Jungle Cruise, and, and Peter Pan were all booking up for all day. So, you know, it's... It's gonna be crucial that you are up and booking at 7 a.m. if you're on property, and you're just gonna to have to hope for the best on some of those rides if you're not on property. I have some real and serious complaints with the, with the service. One, you cannot choose your times, which is a big pain in the hiney if you have plans. Like if you've got a Droid Depot reservation, if you have a Be Our Guest reservation, and then you, you have no choice on when it schedules those times. Something else that happened to us quite a bit, which legit made me very infuriated, is that you would go on the board, okay? So you one, you can only do a lightning lane for a ride one time. So if your kid loves teacups and you're willing to go teacup, 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 it doesn't matter, you can only lightning lane at one time, which I think is kind of dumb, I guess, because Light, you know, lightning lanes for, for teacups is not going to sell out. So I think if it's available, maybe they give you like a cooling off period, like two hours or whatever, until you can book it again. I just, I don't necessarily think that that is fair if I'm paying for it. So I don't love that. But one of the other things is that we would go, you can't modify your times, right? So it just shows you the next available. Well, sometimes you can refresh and sometimes the times would change a little bit, but when you would go to click on something, you would click on a time, say two o'clock, you click on the time, it says two o'clock. By the time you get to the confirmation screen, it's 3.30. So even though you've gone into it, there's no kind of like hold time on that. So you've gone into it thinking it's two o'clock, which is perfect, you're on the side of the park, it's 1.50 now, yay. No, it's got you coming back an hour and a half later. So that is a system issue that I think is honestly unacceptable um, because again, I'm paying for a premium service. I expect premium service, but that is definitely, definitely not what you were getting with Genie Plus. I, again, an experienced Disney goer, I didn't love it. I didn't feel like it was worth the money. I think we only used about eight lightning lanes that day. Granted, we did cut out a little early about six o'clock, we decided to cut it off so that we could go get ready for the dessert party. I don't love it. I think that you can get a much bigger bang for your buck if you're going in the off season. If you are an inexperienced Disney goer, I can see how there could be some benefit there. Um, if you have very small kids, if you only want to do everything one time, um, I can see how this would be really good. But in all of our experiences in 10 days of waiting in lines, all of them, I tracked our, the time that was posted at what time, you know, 40 minutes at 9.05. Um, and I believe two times total, one time it was over and, and maybe two or three times it was spot on. Most of them, uh, you know, it tells me I'm gonna wait, wait 30 minutes for the Little Mermaid ride and then we're in line for 10. Like almost everything is significantly less than it is posted right now. So keep that in mind. And again, you can use the Genie tip board to kind of give you an idea of that. So if you're going to get on a ride, Peter Pan, for example, and it says standby wait time is 60 minutes, but the next available lightning lane, say it's noon, and the next available lightning lane is eight o'clock at night, then you know that that lightning lane is gonna be hopping, which is gonna impact your wait times quite a bit. Um, something else that happened is Haunted Mansion went down when we had a lightning lane reservation for it, which then meant that we it swapped over to kind of an anytime lightning lane uh, to any ride. But then when it did come back up, the lightning lane was, you know, was gorged with four hours worth of people because it hadn't been up and running. So keep in mind that that's definitely going to impact some of your wait times in regular lines versus, um, you know, lightning lanes. Okay, let's talk about something that you may have been seeing, like the actual logistics of booking a Lightning Lane reservation through Genie Plus. You can, if the Lightning Lane that you are booking is, and this is not for individual Lightning Lanes, those are separate, for the Genie Plus Lightning Lane, if what you are booking is two hours past 
park opening. They have what they call a cooling off period. So if at 9 a.m. the park opens, regardless of what time you booked it prior to that, that does not apply here, it's based on park opening. So if at 9 a.m. the park opens, your first lightning lane that you were available to book was at, uh, let's say 11.30, um, at 11 o'clock, you would be able to schedule another lightning lane. So even if you have your first lightning lane at 11.30, it is possible to then book your second lightning lane at noon, for example, because you have that two hour um, cooling off period. And so people are referring to this as you're stacking your lightning lanes. And I've seen some people who were like, you know, we're not gonna get there till noon. They go ahead and buy the Genie Plus with lightning lanes. And at 7 a.m., they go ahead and book one for the first time they'll be there. And then every two hours, they're booking them so that by the time they make it into the park at noon, they could theoretically have like a noon, a one, a two, because the park had been open so long. And because their hours, uh, they're cooling off their two hour, 120 minute, cooling off period had, um, had expired and allowed for them to book another one. Now that is what we did. In hindsight, I probably wouldn't have done that. I'm, I'm not sure because we did go for riding the biggest rides, right? So we wanted the Peter Pan, we wanted the Haunted Mansion on Halloween, and we wanted the Jungle Cruise, which we did not get to. In hindsight, if you are going for quantity over quality, I would go ahead and book starting just as soon as the park is open at nine o'clock because as soon as you scan, you can go ahead and book another one. Once you've scanned, that cooling off period does not apply. Um, and then throughout the day, if you're booking something that's more than 120 minutes from now, again, in 120 minutes, you can book another one. Uh, so the more popular rides, you're booking those so far out that you can't do anything for two hours. So if you're going for quantity over quality, I'd book for the first you can get. If you are going for quality over quantity, please know that you're only gonna be able to use a few of those because again, the really popular rides are booking up hours in advance. And so you're not going to be able to use one every five minutes if you're having to wait 120 minutes between bookings from park opening. So keep that in mind. I really hope that that makes sense because it's hard to kind of explain something that people haven't used and seen. So if you need more clarification on that, scroll right on down to these comments, just let me know. I will do my absolute best to share with you the information that I have. Um, the AI lenses, the AR lenses, I mean, did we play with them? I actually mostly forgot. Um, and so I was frustrated, but then I found out most of them were on there anyway, so it worked out. The audio thing, we didn't use that one time, not one time. Um, and I don't know who would unless you're traveling solo by yourself and you have like earbuds to put in. So I have no idea who would actually use that. I just, I do think that this has a place um, for some people. I just don't feel like it's for me. And again, I think you, you get the absolute most bang for your buck, the best travel experience if you can go in the off season. So if you're going back and forth, um, I get $639 guys for our trip, which is just an insane, insane amount of money. You can do so much with that. I just, the fact that people are just so willingly able to just be like, yes, we'll buy it for all of our family the whole length of our trip is crazy to me. It absolutely is crazy to me. It is, the system so far is very confusing. It is very restrictive for something that we are paying for. I almost would rather pay more money and just be able to do whatever I wanted whenever I wanted to do it. A lot of the complaints that we have with Genie and with the lightning lanes is that the next available ride is across the park. So, you know, we're at Haunted Mansion and, and the next thing it's wanting me to book is Tomorrowland Speedway. Like, I mean, it's a lot of crisscrossing. And the same thing with the, the regular Genie itinerary is that it's got you just kind of running all over the place and it's kind of a pain in the hiney. I think with research, with a map, with a plan, going in the off season is gonna be so much better serving most people. And again, if you're one person for one day, spend the 15 bucks, it doesn't hurt. But if you're a family of four going for 10 days, I mean, we're knocking on $700. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So don't be feeling like you're gonna miss out on something or that you just need to rush in and do it. If you wanna get it for, like I said, those, those kind of big quality rides, maybe, uh, but don't feel like you have to do it. And again, if you have any experience with Disney at all, I don't know that you're gonna feel like this is the best kind of use of your life or time or money. Um, but if you're going on a one-off trip, I can see doing it. If you're going for a day and you wanna make sure your kids, you know, who are, are shorter folks get the most, 
the most bang for their trip, I can see doing it then as well. And I think it will absolutely serve some people, but for me and mine, I didn't love it and I probably won't be spending that money again. But I've got the luxury of being able to travel in the off season. So that helps us an absolute ton. Okay, something that I forgot to note is that yes, you can cancel your Genie Plus reservations. So there was, I had read a cautionary tale about this before we left, but there was at least one time where it's like we had something we didn't want and we saw something we wanted better. And so it's like, okay, do I risk canceling it? So in the amount of time that it took me to cancel it, there is an option, it's a pain. In the amount of time it took me to cancel it, the original reservation that I had canceled it for was totally gone. And therefore I just wasted time because then when I went back to book the original, that time was gone. So it better be really good if you're gonna cancel it. It takes so long and the process is such a pain in the hiney that it really can do you a disservice versus just going to the stinking ride and scanning it and then booking the next one. Like trying to play the system, game the system, they've definitely put that down. Because like we used to, like you get a fast pass reservation and then you would modify and it would give you better time. And if you clicked modify enough, you could maintain your reservation, but then you could swap to a better reservation. And that's how you could just like bump them up, bump them up, bump them up and use so many in a day. That is definitely, definitely gone. There is no way to modify. You have to fully cancel and then fully go back in. And then by then you're like down a whole ride for the day because it took your, yourself so stinking long to do it. So you are in better shape just sticking with it and going with it. Unless you know for a fact that you want to cancel it and it's going to like serve you well because pain in the hiney guys, pain in the hiney. Okay, so one more little tidbit, the Genie Plus Lightning Lane. Everyone who has a ticket needs a reservation. So if you have a kids who are under three who don't have a um, don't have a ticket, they do not need their own reservation. Same thing with the individual Lightning Lane purchases. However, everybody who's going through the line needs the Lightning Lane, needs the Genie Plus, or needs the individual Lightning Lane purchased. Okay, so if you're planning to do uh, you know, say your kid can't ride something bigger, but you're like, okay, well, we'll reserve them a time to go on teacups. If you're going with them, you need to be able to scan that band. They're also utilizing the double scans. So you scan at the front and then you scan again later. You cannot book your next lightning lane until after the second scan. So keep that in mind, not the first one, but the second one. You won't be eligible to book again until you've scanned a second time, which is much closer to the ride. Um, individual lightning lanes and rider swap. So if you are doing rider swap, you've got a kid, let's say we're gonna go on Rise of the Resistance and you have a kid who's like 30 inches, much too short. Everyone who is going on Rise of the Resistance will need a lightning lane purchase, okay? An individual lightning lane purchase if that's the route that you're going. So that means both mom and dad, even if they're not riding at the same time, even if they're planning to utilize rider swap, still need a paid reservation if you're planning to use the individual lightning lane lines okay so just keep in mind if you're going through the lines at all for anything for individual lightning lanes or for genie plus lightning lanes everyone who has a ticket needs to have been able to purchase that so keep it in mind guys i hope you found this helpful entertaining or informative if you have any questions at all about genie genie plus individual lightning lanes let me know like i said we did do one individual lightning lane it was rise of the resistance it was the only one i was willing to pay for but let me tell you we rode every single individual lightning lane ride and had no issues getting into them, onto them, or any of that as a family of four at a you know, relatively busy time because they're still kind of full kicking into that uh, 50th anniversary, Halloween, and then one of the, the wine and dine marathon was during that time we were there. So it was pretty busy, but with a great strategy, with a great plan, I think you can absolutely master this pretty easily. So I don't think that you have to just pour, continue pouring money into your Disney vacation to get the most out of it. Honestly, um, that's not something I'm gonna advocate for. So save your money and just get a little bit better plan, maybe. Let me know if I can help with that, guys. Scroll right on down to the comments, head on over to Instagram, at Suitcase Princess, and uh, hit me up if you have anything that maybe wasn't clear that you would like a little bit more explanation on. I really tried to hit cost, um, the differences, Genie, Genie Plus, individual lightning lanes, um, what stacking means, because that's a confusing thing if you're not there. There is that 120 minute cooling off period from park opening. So if you're booking test track at, at two o'clock in Epcot, you can't actually, their park doesn't open till 11. You're not booking anything else till one o'clock. So keep that in mind that like, 
$15 a day starting at one o'clock. Just mind blown. Um, again, I don't think there's any use for this in Epcot. I don't think there is any use for this in Animal Kingdom. And uh, Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom would be the only two that I'd even consider it. And honestly, after using it, I would not consider it um, maybe again. So keep that in mind. Uh, guys, I hope you found it as helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. I will be back sharing so much more Disney stuff. So in the comments over on Instagram, let me know, what do you want to see next? What's coming next? We're going to talk about mobile ordering because I've heard a lot of complaints about that. And honestly, it's pretty sweet and pretty amazing. Um, let me know. We're going to talk about the dessert party because I love it. It was fantastic. We're going to talk about merchandise order. We're going to talk about all the things that could possibly impact your vacation to Disney as a family, because let's not kid. It's just not the same, right? It's not the same if you're traveling with family and kids, um, as it is as the, the, so many of these theme park vloggers that are just running around with a camera in themselves. So I'm here, I'm gonna help you. If you have questions, let me know. I will do my best to answer them. And again, I hope that this explanation of Genie, Genie Plus, Lightning Lanes made some sense. I really hope that it did. Guys, um, again, if you need clarification, let me know. 